so today we are going to discuss about principal ideal domains so let us uh, first write the definition an integral domain so the first thing I will need here is that we will work in an integral domain T is a principal ideal domain if every ideal in D is a principal ideal so I hope we know that what is meant by a principal ideal a principal ideal means an ideal which is uh, generated by single element generated by one element so that is a principal ideal domain so let us write what are the examples now we know that in the first example is in Z in Z we know that every ideal is of the form in Z so this which is actually generated by n like 2z if I take I know that 2z is generated by Similar way I am trying to say that nz is generated by n and every ideal is nz. So this means that all ideals in z are basically principal ideals. So let me write therefore all ideals in z are principal ideals. therefore my definition tells me that if every ideal is a principal ideal then such a domain will be called as a principal ideal domain so this means that Z is a principal ideal domain another example if you see one more example of principal ideal domain is you going to Rx. Or in general, I will write Fx, where this F must be a field. So I can talk about Rx, Qx, Cx, Zpx, anything then in the polynomial rings section in polynomial rings we have studied that every non-zero ideal every ideal let me not write even non zero zero ideal is also generated by one element so every ideal is generated by single element every take any ideal it is generated by some element in the ideal and you need only one element to generate it ideal so we have done this section we have done this result in the polynomial rings section 
so this means that by using that thing I can now directly say that all ideals in Rx are principal and therefore Rx is a PID in general fx is a PID if f is a field so if someone asks me is zx PID so I will say that not necessary okay is is z5 x PID z5 x p z5 x means all polynomials with coefficients in z5 then I will say yes sure because z5 is a field right so I hope the two examples of PIDs are clear let me just zoom in and show you that uh, I will check if every if every ideal is a principal ideal I will say that the domain is a PID for example we have two examples important example is Z another important example is all FX where F is a field these are two important examples of PID that are in front of us now let me go to some small problems very easy problems but they are very important problems let me number them from 1 to 4 so if A divides B and the ideal then B must be an element of ideal generated by A in a, a very good ring in a I will say I will take a commutative ring with unity let me take a good ring if everything is good in this ring you can use commutativity you can use unity if you want a commutative ring with unity then that ring is say R okay so this is very easy so if A divides B then we know that B can be written as A times something so X is in the ring correct now, now we know that if we take any element if I have an ideal is generated by a, a so the first person to be in the ideal is a because the ideal is generated by a itself so a belongs to the ideal generated by a remember this is an ideal and I'm taking any x in the ring And I'm very sure by definition of ideal e to x must belong to the ideal. Who is that ideal? The ideal is ideal generated by a. So this means that e to x belongs to ideal generated by a. But who is a into x? 
this means that B belongs to ideal generated by A. So this means that I started with A divides B and using that I have concluded that B must belong to ideal generated by A. This is what was the target of our exercise. I really did not use anywhere in a commutative ring with unity but it is okay if I don't use it. Let me go to the second problem. So in the so let's take the second problem. If A divides B then we have just now proved that B belongs to ideal generated by A. Now we will prove that ideal generated by B is a subset of ideal generated by A. So let me write the first problem was if A divides B then B belongs to ideal generated by A. This we have, we have proved. Now I am trying to prove that if A divides B then ideal generated by B is also a subset of ideal generated by A. So the answer is the justification is easy. So if A divides B I can surely say that B belongs to ideal generated by A by problem 1. Okay. Therefore what? B is equal to what is ideal generated by A? We know that ideal generated by A means all multiples of a correct with so all multiples of a with that multiple with the other number is a element of r so this means that b is equal to ax for some x in r so remember this ideal generated by a means collection of all multiples of a and then i will also add other elements which are in this the same in the same set okay means I have a times x plus b times y such type of elements for the time being I will just write multiples of a so b is equal to a into x for some x in r now what we want to prove so let me say this statement one now what I want to show is ideal generated by look at this ideal generated by b is a subset of ideal generated by a so i will take one element from this set and try to show that it is in this set so let me take alpha belonging to ideal generated by b and at the end i will conclude that alpha belongs to ideal generated by A. Once I do this, I will automatically be proving that ideal generated by B subset of ideal generated by A. So how am I going to do this? So alpha is belonging to ideal generated by B means alpha must be a multiple of B. So alpha is B to S for some S in the ring same logic so this means that alpha is equal to look at statement 1 b is nothing but ax so this means a x s so this means x is also an r s is also an r so this means a to x s Excess 
is x dash in R. This means alpha is equal to a times x dash. This means alpha is a multiple of a. Therefore, alpha must be an element of ideal generated by A. So let me just simply quickly revise. So we were given that A was dividing B and we wanted to show that ideal generated by B is contained in ideal generated by A. So by add A, so A dividing B from problem 1 I got that B is it's an element of ideal generated by A. So I could write B is equal to AX where ideal generated by A contains all multiples of A. So I wanted to show that ideal generated by B is contained in the A. So I took an element from that set. After these calculations, I got that alpha is belonging to ideal generated by A. So this means that ideal generated by B is the subset of ideal generated by A. This is what we wanted to prove. So the third important consequence of this is that if A divides B and B divides A then consequence obviously is that A ideal generated by A is equal to ideal generated by B. The answer of this is now very easy because the second part what we have done is that A divides B implies ideal generated by B is a subset of ideal generated by A. So I'm going to use this. So A divided by B will give me B ideal generated by B is a subset of ideal generated by A. And B divides A gives me ideal generated by A subset of ideal generated by B. And though the conclusion of both of these is that ideal generated by A is equal to ideal generated by B. So that solves my third. The last fourth important thing that we will need in this chapter the problem if A is an element in ideal I so say I is ideal then ideal generated by A is a subset of I so if A is in I Now we look at all multiples of A. That becomes a subset of I. So this is also easy but important fact. So let me take alpha belonging to ideal generated by A and my final target will be to show that alpha belongs to i. This is what I mean to say. That this is a subset of this. I have to fill in the in-between calculations. So now alpha is an ideal generated by a. Means alpha is equal to a multiplied by r for some r in the ring. The ring is outside this. This a is in the ideal r is in the ring so a into r is also in i because i is ideal so this means that alpha this is alpha this is alpha belongs to that is what I wanted. So this means that if A is in the ideal, 
then the ideal generated by A is also inside the set I. So this is what we have proved that ideal generated by A is a subset of I. So in the next uh, in the next lecture, I will discuss about something called as ascending chain conditions in a PID. So this was all preparation for that. So let us see in the next class.